obtained by the combustion of ether and alcohol. Oh, go on, Eddie. It's never so interesting. Lampoon. Oh, Eddie, please. We're having this all night. It's a boring murder for tears. Oh, no, he's not, really. It's very educational. Yes, but I don't mind. I think it's a lovely way to spend an evening. Dad gave me this book for my birthday and he went to a lot of trouble to get it. Yes, three quarters of an hour in the pouring rain, haggling over the things in the end. The man practically chucked it at him. Two and throttles, mildew and all. Never mind, it's the thought what counts. It's full of interesting information, for instance. Eddie. Yeah? Do me a favour. What? Belt up. <laughs> Why don't you take Myrtle for a walk? Oh, yes! Well, where we go at this time of night? Oh, it's a full moon and Lover's Lane used to be the place. Well, it's rather late, but if you insist, Eddie... Here, if you think I'm humping this great big book up Lover's Lane at this time of night... <laughs> go on with your education. <coughs> Here, what about this? Common ailments and bodily disorders. That does it. Good night. <laughs> you sit down. You might learn something. That's what I'm afraid of. Well, you're not going to let him loose on a subject like that. How, how morbid can you get? All right, then. So I'm morbid. Maybe I've got every reason to be. Why, Mum, aren't you well? Well, I, I'll say this. I'm not myself. Oh, Mum, what's the matter? I'm not myself. Well, what's the trouble? It must have a name. Well, you've got the book. What have you got in stock? I'll read, <laughs> I'll read you out, son. <laughs> Acne? Well, that's not a complaint. That's where your cousin Fred comes from. Oh, I beg your pardon. Acne is pimples. Oh, charming. Well, it's not that. Go on. Adenoids? No. Apoplexy? Not yet. Alcoholism? And there's your father, right on his cue. <laughs> Don't say anything to him about this. You mean if he thought you had something, he'd worry? No, he can't convince me. I haven't got it. He can't bear me to have anything. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. That's a lovely sight, a really lovely sight. The family circle, happy and united, gathered round. One member reads aloud from the lovely book what his kind father gave to him. Ah, it is not much. It's Mark 2 and 9. Eddie, do you mind? It is not much, but how often in this day and age does one see such a thing? Do sit down, out before you fall down. Ah, thank you, Myrtle. Yes, I will admit I have had a couple, but tonight was a big night for me. Tonight I was inaugurated. Never mind, Eddie. It don't mean what you think. Now, I was honoured tonight by my gallant little band. Little band? The mob he drinks with up the yarn and unicorn. The mob? We are a fraternity. Like the Druids? Exactly. Well, nearly like the Druids. Very, very similar. Fellas of the Lion and Unicorn Intimate Drinking Society. What's that? The Fluids. <laughs> He's right. Yes, young Ernie Carpenter thought that one up. He's got an headpiece on him, that boy. You'll have headpiece on you in the morning. <laughs> Ah, they honoured me, Ada. Honoured me, they have. Is that when you were investigated? Inaugurated. <laughs> yes, tonight I was made pot holder to the chief imbiber. You was made what to who? It's part of the ceremony, this pot holding it. Oh, blimey, look, it's a quart pot full of beer and I have to hold it. You had to be inaugurated to hold a pot of beer. I suppose if somebody wants a packet of crisps, you have to have a general election. No. <laughs> it's part of the ceremony. It's all dead ceremonial, you know. Now, look, the chief imbiber. Oh, who? The fluid in chief, the head one. Now, the chief imbiber, he sits here. Ada, you be him. Sit down, girl. Come on, Mum. Go on. Now, he sits here and he's all done up in his regalia and that. Oh, he looks very smart indeed. And I sit here, Eddie, clear up. And I sit here on his right and I hold his pot for him. Well, why can't he hold it himself? My dear girl, he's got a ceremonial orb in the one hand and his dividing rod in the other. What do you think he is, a contortionist? <laughs> the friends you keep, nothing would surprise me. Well, anyway, that's pot holding. I don't think you're interested in On the contrary, Pop, I am fascinated. You have opened up for me an aspect of British home life that I never knew existed. Well, you know now. Oh, but you can't leave it there. I gotta know the rest. I just gotta know. For example, what happens when the, um... Chief imbiber? It needs a drink. Ah, uh, I could get drummed out for telling you. Oh, come on. All right, I will. Uh, it's a special sort of a pot, you see. It's got a sort of special spout sticking out the side like that. Have you got it? Yeah. Special spout like that. Now, I sit here, and he sits there, and in his hand, oh, he's got the... Oh, go on, we've had all that. Later, do you mind? Come on, Bob, what happens when he, when, when he wants a drink? Well, he knocks on the table with a ceremonial orb. That's the idea. I poke the spout in his north and south, and away we go. Now, that's devotion to me. I'm going to bed. It's tradition, my girl, and you must keep tradition alive. Oh, you're going the right way to kill it. Stone dead pot holding, indeed, load of rabbit. No, Pop, I think it's very interesting. Do you suppose I could come up with you and meet these fluids of yours? I'd like to write an article about them. No, I don't know. It's all dead secret, you know. I don't know how they'd react to having themselves written about. <laughs>
And naturally, I would contribute a small percentage of my earnings to the club fund. Tomorrow night, 8.15, chop. <laughs> Right, Fanny Mary. Emma said you was feeling poorly, love, so I wanted if this might be any help to. Oh, well, thank you very much. What is it? Well, we're not quite sure. The label's come off. Anyway, it's from the doctor, so I reckon it's all right. Oh, what thank you. What is it you. you've got there? Well, it's a funny sort of feeling, but I don't think medicine would do me any good. I don't think what I've got's been invented yet. I've been all through Eddie's book, but it's not there. It's a sort of nasty feeling of having missed something and not knowing what you've missed so you can do something about it. <laughs> Dear, sounds complicated. Love, anyhow, I'll leave you the bottle just in case. Oh, thank you, Etty. Oh, while you're here, you might as well have a cup of tea. Oh, well, I won't say no. I didn't think you would. Come in. <laughs> oh, well, good evening. Oh, hello, Joyce. What, all on your own? Yeah, I'm a grass widow tonight. Oh. Just having a night out with Dad. Oh, really? I never thought he was like that. He's not like that, whatever you mean by that. If you must know, Alf's gone to a meeting and Jeff's gone along to take notes. Oh, funny how Sam's gone to a meeting. Perhaps it's the same one. Shouldn't think so, my Sam's temperance. No, not that I'm against drinking, I mean in moderation. Sugar or will you have yours neat? <laughs> Don't be like that, Hazel. We all know your Alf likes the drop. I say good luck to him. Well, I mean, it's his life, and it really speaks. Look, Eddie, I don't want to fall out with you, but it could be arranged. <laughs> well, now, I'm sorry, Eddie. All right, right I, I accept you... your apology, but don't jump to conclusions. For all you know, they might have gone to choir practice. I've got a lovely <laughs> Oh, that should go down well after the sermon. There they are hanging on a the wall. There stands me wife. What is the meaning of this? The meaning of what? I wasn't here. I just walked in. I walked in. <laughs> Why, you can't even stand. Jeff, I'm surprised at you bringing him home like this. Hey, you're doing me a grave injustice. I can stand up all right. Well, see about that. Let him go, Jeff. I don't, I don't, no. Jeff, let him go. Hey, no. <laughs> <laughs> You shouldn't have made me do that, Ma. Shit! He yeah, has been taking notes, hasn't he? You keep out of this, Eddie Proud. Oh, I will, I will. I don't want to get mixed up in it. Oh, nor do I. I don't want any part of it. You keep quiet. We'll get to you later. But I'll say this. If my son come home like that, I wouldn't know where to look. Eddie, yeah, you look on your front doorstep. That's where we left him. <laughs> he was sleeping like a baby. It takes the temperance ones the worst, dear. I'll come back with you. You start on them, I'll take over where you leave all. Really, Jeff? I, I don't know what to say. Well, welcome home would be nice. <laughs> oh, get up! Oh, my. However, to get to the state. Uh, it wasn't easy, I can tell you. I wish you'd been down to Fluids tonight, Joyce. You would have been proud of him. Would I? Yes, I tell you, the boys took such a fancy to him, they want to make him a member. What? Yes, I'm going to be a fluid. <laughs> How are you? We'll talk about that in the morning. Come on, you bet. I'll help you. No, you don't. You've done quite enough. Oh, don't be like that, Joyce. You stay here and face Mum, if you dare. If I dare? Well, isn't it marvellous? Come on, lover boy. <laughs> Boy, come on. Oh. Wonderful girl, this. Who is she? <laughs> come oh, on. Get to bed. <laughs> Ooh. If I dare. Anybody think I was facing a firing squad or something? <laughs> oh, take hold of yourself, Half Hawkins. Remember, remember that you are a fluid. <laughs> Uh, we never retreated in them days, did we, mate? Uh, shoulder to shoulder, we faced the foe. And if we can face 40,000 German bayonets, we can face Haider. <laughs> oh, blimey. Stand up, mate. Now, courage, brother Alfred. You just have your supper and so. Nothing is going to happen. If I dare, indeed. <laughs> if I dare. What do they think I am? A flipping mouse or something? <laughs> Yeah, I'm not, I'm not.
It's raining. I never done it. What's the matter with you? Tomato, uh, with me. Uh, no, uh, no, no, uh, nothing, girl. No, no. Uh, I think I'll go to bed. Good night. Alfred, come back here. You're not greeting all for Vivian. That's no, I never thought I was. Now, uh, look, Ada, uh, Ada, about tonight. Nothing about tonight. Month after month, you've been pulling the wool over my eyes. That lot you care about my health. You don't care that I'm wasting away. Put it in off and put it off. Forgotten all about it. Put in what all? My summer holiday. Ah, uh, look, all Jeff and I did. We went. Your summer holiday. We can't go in June, you said. Too cold in July was too crowded and then there was a month it rained. Ada. You deliberately let me forget all about it. No wonder I'm feeling so low and depressed. Ada. Worrying myself sick, wondering what I'd missed. And still I wouldn't have known if it hadn't been for a chance to mark Eddie May while she was taking off Sam's boots. Ada, listen, mate. This is a straightforward argument about drinking. This is more important. I want my summer holiday. Well, but it, it, it's nearly November. I don't care if it's Christmas. I've never missed my summer holiday yet and I'm not missing it now. Ada, mate, we have you. I'm not going on holiday in November. Now look here, Alfred. No, laughing. mate, no. Alfred! No! No, the idea's ridiculous. Besides, I couldn't go away now, even if I wanted to. I've got responsibilities. I'm a, I'm a potholder. I couldn't leave the fluids in mid-season. I see. <laughs> so it boils down to this. It's either your drinking or my summer holiday. No, it's not that at all. Oh, yes, it is. I've got to go on sweating and slogging and slaving here while you spend half your time drunk and incapable. <laughs> Drunk and incapable. Hey, dear, you have cut me to the quick. Hello. Eddie, Eddie, my son, have you ever seen your father drunk and incapable? Oh, no, Dad. Why, can I? No, you cannot. I mean, you never will. Why, that's rule number one in the fluids handbook. If you cannot hold it, you do not deserve it. <laughs> drunk and incapable. Hey, dear, let me tell you the day you find me drunk and incapable on that day I will not only sign the pledge but I will do anything you care to ask me. You mean that? You know what you're talking about? I do. Eddie, hold yourself available. I may need witnesses. <laughs> <laughs> that husband of mine. Sit down, dear. You're going through a phase. As if last night wasn't bad enough. Mum Jeff insists I'm going through with it. Naturally. Look who's behind him. Yeah, I could strangle Dad, too. Thank you, Joyce. That is my department. <laughs> Jeff seems to think that being made of fluid is some kind of honour or something. Did you know that he was being inaugurated tonight? Yes, I knew. But did you know it was being done here, in our front parlour? Yes, I knew. You knew? Oh, get ghastly boozing, pals. You're going to allow it? Allow it? I arranged it. I even let him have Eddie as barman. What? <laughs> two points of strategy, my dear. One, it gives them a false sense of security, and two, I've got them where I can lay my hands on them. <laughs> Mum, you're, you're not going to... Descend on them with a meat axe. No, my dear, your father's the one I'm after. If he falls, they all fall. If he falls? Last night, your father made a very, very bad statement that may affect his whole life. Ah, atomic special. That'll do it. I reckon you get everything. Well, I think so, but I'm not used to shopping up your flight. Right, whiskey, gin, rum, sherry, <laughs> milk, stout. Well, I thought... I'm you can think well. again. These are weapons of war, not elevens is. <laughs> Oh, well, the Russians don't need that anymore. <laughs> Quick action bleach. bleach. Oh, well, that's not... <laughs> Good health. Well, that's made all in reality money, but I only hope it's worth it. Mum, I don't understand. Fight fire with fire, my dear, and much though it grieves me to see your father paralytic, you've got to be cruel to be kind. <laughs> now, you keep your father and Ed and uh, Jeff out of here and send Eddie in to me at once. Right. Now, where's me cauldron? He's had these all separate. Let's see how he likes them all together. <laughs> Are you sure it'll be all right? Well, of course I'm sure. I've given Eddie strict instructions. Raspberry cord, you but the others is disguised as brown ale. Yes, that's right. We've run out of empty beer bottles, but by the time they've got through the other lot, they won't be able to read the label. <laughs> now, you're quite sure you know what you've got to do? Yeah, see, Dad gets as much of this special as possible. That's the idea. Do you know, Mum, I'm going to feel awful. No, you're not. He is. <laughs> destroying my own father. Destroying him? Would I let you destroy him? Well, no, I suppose not. No, if he had to be destroyed, I'd do it. <laughs> now, 
what the others have is up to them. You concentrate on your father. Ah, the invasion started. You're on duty. Here they are now. Sam's in there, suppose. You know, Hetty, that is a chance we should just have to take. <laughs> This way, come right in. Thanks, Eddie, boy. Hello, Eddie, good evening. Sam. Hello, Eddie. Good evening. Oh, Mr. Brown. Yes, sir. Don't touch the brown ale. Don't worry, I won't. I'm a light man myself. Oh, oh Sam. Come on, Sam. Come on, Sam. Here he is. Says us, Sam. Clue us all. Now, sit down, gentlemen. Make yourself absolutely at what's all this, Eddie. What's all this? Ch -ch 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 uh, you, no, look, you don't want to be nervous. Serve the guests first. And don't be afraid of it. It's not dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> You still worrying about your Sam? Mm. Oh, good heavens, no. He couldn't get much worse than he was last night, really, could he? All I'm wondering is, are you sure you're doing the right thing? Of course I'm doing the right thing. And one day Alf will thank me for it. Now, my conscience is perfectly clear. <laughs> oh, good evening, Vicar. Good evening. something. <sighs> uh, well, I hope you don't mind my popping in. Oh, right no, there. not at all, Vicar. Oh, I just wanted to have a word with Edward. Oh, yes. About collecting for the bazaar. Oh, yes. Um, uh, well, he started them um, for the bazaar. I think he's going to make all these into lampshades. Oh, really? Yes. Can I see him? Uh, well, he's got his hands rather full at the moment. Welcome to us, for you are a fluid. Right, now then, step number two, Jeff. The ceremonial handshake. Yeah, I think I know that one. Thanks, Sam. A long pull, a short pull, and the best pull of the lot. That was very, very good. Very good. That was beautifully done. Ah, come on, Eddie, jump about. Yeah, come in, Jeff. Your idea. Top him up. That's it, my boy. Now, I'll, I'll have brown ale this time. Brown ale, Dad? Yes. Good. That's a funny colour, isn't it? Oh, well, it's... Never um... mind the ceremonial toast. The toast. The toast. The first Burgomaster. The, the first Burgomaster. He's on the move. Which way is he moving? Two to the right. Two to the right. Three to the left. Three to the left. And two to the right. Two to the right. To the right. And down to the basement. Stand about, chop them up. Come on, boy. Chop about. That's it. Uh, perhaps I can sit down. No, I mean, not in here. In the other room. No, no, I much prefer the kitchen, the hub of the home, as I call it. Do you? Oh, yes, this is where everything goes on. Yes, there's been some rough goings on here from time to time. <laughs> Raspberry cordial. My word, that takes me back quite a bit. Yes, it would. I mean, does it? You know I haven't tasted raspberry cordial since I was quite a lad. Haven't you? Oh, I was a regular little glutton for this. Uh, of course, once palate changed yes. for years. No, but uh, I went... You to... wouldn't recognise it now. <laughs> Joyce, make the tea for heaven's sake. Yeah. The second Burgomaster. The, the second, second Burgomaster. He's on the move. Which way is the woman? One to the right. One, One to, to the, the right. right. Two to the left. Two to the left. Three to the right. Three to the right. And down to the basement. Flores! A party? And uh, the people next door, they're a noisy lot. I'll make the tea. And not in that pot. Ooh. It wants cleaning. A uh, well lined teapot makes the best brew. I like mine strong. You wouldn't like it that strong. <laughs> My oh, I've got it. Well, oh, hey, excuse me. Yes. I need some more. No, I. Yeah, what you see? Well, learn the combination. But they keep changing Let's it. Do something. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that, that came from your parlour. Uh, yes, my husband. He's holding a little meeting. With raspberry cordial? It's a temperance meeting. <laughs> the ninth 
Bergamaster. To the right, Bergamaster. Seventeen to the right. Seventeen. He's on the move tonight. He hasn't moved. He's emigrated. Uh, one, two, two five, nine. I'm so sorry that Eddie has been so long. He's very busy. He's having trouble. Oh, really? Uh, with the raspberry cordial. Oh, a temperance meeting. Yes. Oh, splendid. Perhaps I can look in on them. Oh, no, they're very, very shy. Oh, nonsense. A wonderful cause. I should like to shake your husband by the hand. So you shall, as soon as we've brought him round. We'll bring him round tomorrow. <laughs> well, I should like to give them a word of encouragement. However, perhaps a little later on. Oh, uh, must you go? Oh, that's all right. I've plenty of time. I thought you must have. <laughs> You can't be a spot of fresh air. I think you're doing a wonderful job. <laughs> Unflinching devotion to duty. The poor man looks absolutely tired out. Well, it's very late. Oh. Oh. Am I keeping you up? Oh, no. Oh, well, perhaps I'll see Edward some other time. Oh, yes, you do that. Uh, I'll go out the front way if you don't mind. No, we don't mind. <laughs> I think I'll just say good night. Uh, good night, Vicar. It was so nice of you to call. Do come again. Oh, well, uh, good, good night. <laughs> well. Oh, Mum, it's awful in there. They came in and passed out. Cold. All of us. Oh, well. Uh, oh, well. Hello, mate. Oh, girl, you've done us proud tonight. That little cocktail that you knocked up, that was marvellous. That stone rigid. You knew? Well, I knew that you couldn't get a kick like that off a of bra, no. I, it was the most marvellous surprise. It really made the party here have a snort. <laughs> you must be superhuman. Not at all. I'd be as flat as the rest of them if I hadn't drunk that half a pound of olive oil beforehand. It forms a sort of... Film over the fumes, you know. It was Eddie's idea. Eddie's idea? Yes, he got it out of that book of his, and it works. Eddie. Uh... No, Mum, no. <laughs> I had to do it, Mum. What sort of a son do you think I am? I wanted to help you, but I couldn't work against Dad. I had to give him a sporting chance. <laughs> I wasn't even sure whether that olive oil would work. <laughs> Eddie, you know, you've made me feel real ashamed of myself. Oh, Mum, that's all right. Go, oh, it's all right. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Go, we'll soon tidy up this lot in here. Here, Eddie, go and get the hand cart and we will transport our guests back to the line and unicorn and park them outside. Right, Dad. Oh, not the one in the front garden, the mate. The one in the front garden? No, that's the vicar. The vicar? Now, you never... Oh, no, I never done nothing. He poked his head through the front window to say goodnight and the fumes got him. <laughs> and you was the one I was after. I worked so hard and all for my summer holiday. Oh, well. You did work hard, didn't you, girl? And you'll have your summer holiday. You deserve it, my darling. Oh, well. <laughs> Mind you, one thing, girl, this time of year, it's bound to rain. It wouldn't dare. <laughs> Very nice. Here, wait a bit. Come on, come on, come on. 